Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be synthesizing a four bar mechanism in Creo Elements uh, Pro 5.0. And my name is Dan Pfeiffer. My email address is right there. Uh, with that said, I'm going to jump right into the program. So here we can see that this is our opening screen. Uh, there's a lot to learn about Creo, and I would suggest learning it in baby steps. That's what I've been doing, uh, working through some of the tutorials. But just to get you started, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to start with the two-dimensional uh, portion, which is called the Sketcher. And you'll go ahead and create a new file by clicking here or going to File New, um, either way. And then here, I want to create a um, sketch, and we'll call it four underscore bar. Now, Creo does not let you use spaces. It'll give you error messages, and it's just annoying. So, that said, we're going to get started. The first thing I want to do is create my coordinate system. And to do that, I will use the um, center line tool uh, to create a horizontal and a vertical here. Other things that you should know is how to pan, zoom, uh, and there's a couple of ways to do this. If we're in the two dimensions, all you really have to do is hold down the middle mouse button and then drag that will pan. Um, but in three dimensions you'll want to use the shift key and the middle mouse button so you get used to uh, panning in that way too. Um, you can also hold down control and then middle mouse button and then in and out to zoom. Um, also the mouse wheel will scroll in and out in two dimensions like that. So now that we know how to manipulate the general field that we'll be looking at, I'm going to start creating a four bar uh, based on these parameters where the link one is six, link two is two, link three seven, link four, so on and so forth. And I'm going to put that off to the side for right now. And I want to start out by just creating a line segment. And we're going to do that by, I like to place mine at the origin, it makes uh, just measuring the angles a little bit easier, and it randomly put that somewhere. Now it'll keep building these lines until you center click, so you center click to say I'm done with that. Now I want to build another one line for my S1, or link 1 I should say, and we're going to go over here to the uh, arrows, it looks like an arrow between two lines with two heads, and that's the um, normal uh, creating definitions. Uh, so we're going to parameterize these now. And you parameterize it by left clicking on the uh, line that you want to parameterize and then center clicking perpendicular to that. Now this is measuring relative to the another little key button there is the um, refit. So it's right now got a weak parameter of setting this to the horizontal or the vertical axis and I don't want to do that so I'm going to click here and I'm going to set it at a specific length and my link length 2 is 2 and now I want to get the angle between these so I can still continue using the same tool by clicking on both of them and then uh, center clicking in between to set my angle now these are what are called um, strong uh, dimensions. They're user-defined dimensions that are not set to change. Then um, you'll notice my screen might look a little different than yours. I've uh, changed some of the colors just to optimize it for uh, video viewing, etc. So I'm going to refit so you, uh, you can all see. And now you can move these dimensions so that see these can be overlapping. Make sure that you have, so you have to stop doing that I have to make sure that this tool is selected, um, the pointer tool, so that I can move them wherever I want so that you can get a nice looking uh, um, pick. So from here I have to do two things. I have to one, define my coupler link and two, my output link. So my coupler link has a length of seven. Now that means it can be seven anywhere from this particular point. So we're going to use the center tool to create a circle with a radius of 7. Now it automatically defaults to giving you the diameter and we don't want that so you're going to go back to your dimension tool, select the circle and then 
center click outside of it. Once you do that, the next step is to change the radius to 7.0, which will be much, much bigger. And then we are going to um, zoom out, refit that. And now we will go to creating our last link here by doing a center uh, circle tool again. Uh, let's make it a bit larger. I found that if it sometimes makes, like if it was really close in size to this one, it'll automatically snap these together to being constrained. And it'll pop up error messages for that. And uh, you really do have to read those error messages to just kind of decrypt what it says. So let's go ahead and change that so that we have it at 9.0 instead of 10 there. So now we have a two uh, different solutions that we could do. We'll call those the top and the bottom. And here I'm going to create this. So my coupler link is going to be at the intersection of those two. Now I'm going to zoom in here so you can see really clearly what happens. If you don't click exactly at the intersection, right now it's going to put this coincident with this nine circle and this will be co coincident with the seven circle. So it is uh, important that you uh, get it right on there. Another way to do this is to um, set it up so that Uh, you could put it on one circle and then click the endpoint and then use your constraints tool, which is over here, and set it coincident there. But it's a little faster if you can zoom in and just get the point you want done. So now we come here and we say, okay, I want to start where that one was and I want to finish there. And it does do a pretty good job of guessing where you want to do, if you want a midpoint, if you want a tangent, etc. Now let's take a look at what we have so far. We have our four bars, one, two, three, four, and we have an angle here. This is theta two. Our unknown angles in this particular problem were theta three and theta four. To find those, we can measure relative to this axis here. But I don't particularly like the idea of just running a uh, measurement from here through there. So what I like to do is add in a center point, a center line, I should say, that is horizontal at where the coupler link starts. And then I can measure that angle as a reference angle. Now, undo that. Oops. There we go. So let's just refit it so I don't have to do that. Now I want to zoom in a little bit so I can make sure that I get this correct. So again, that was center line tool. And one of these is a two point center line, the other is a single uh, point center line. And I generally use the center single point because it's faster. And then I'm done with that so I have to center click. Okay, so it's showing up the parameters that I've defined already. Now. I can't normal uh I can't create this as a normal parameter. So what I have to do is call it a reference parameter and therefore it won't change it it won't um be hard to find. It will change as my system changes. So you can see that it's a reference parameter because it's denoted in parentheses here. Now the last one I needed was theta 4. So to do that, I will do the exact same thing, reference parameter, and then you go from one to the other, and then you center click in between those two, and it will give you that angle. So this is um, these are our two solutions for this particular setup of the given information. But now let's analyze this in the open and closed positions. So here, if I take... Um, go back to my selection tool because I'm done uh, parameterizing. I want to change this 30 degrees here. So what I'll do is I'll s select that and then I will go over to the modify tool which s reminds me of a piecewise function but there's just generally um, three different things in there. It's a little scattered function. And what you can do now is you can rotate it so that this changes. And if it, everything works correctly, my crank, which is the input here, 
should go all the way in 360 degrees. And it does. You'll watch, and then my rocker part which is up here, you can watch this point as I rotate this through its full 360 degrees, we'll have a maximum and a minimum point. There's max, there's min, or opposite that, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, that's max, that's min. And that's hence the crank rocker portion. So if I really want to analyze this even more in depth, let's go ahead and look at the open and close positions to try to find the extreme here. Now I get a little bit uh, anal about this, so what I do is I'll either, um, oftentimes I'll put in a reference angle between uh, the first and the second here. I mean the second and the third, pardon me. Go. Or I'll zoom in all the way to make sure that this is as uh, open as it's going to get. And I've got that pretty well down right there. Now you can affect, you can change the sensitivity of this in here by using the slider bar. Um, you could also change the sensitivity of your mouse. And I'll do both of those things when we examine the closed position here. So we can examine the closed position and that will be right here. So I like that the way I defined this, it's still measuring theta 3 relative to the x-axis. The x-axis floats with it. And so I can see a nice clean, uh, oops, I can see a nice clean measurement here of what that actually is. So, given that all of these variables have stayed the same, let's check if we're all the way, actually that's really good. Um, it's usually not that good. Usually it's something like this when you zoom in. And then you say, okay, uh, well, I want to get that a little closer, so I'll lower my sensitivity, and then I can find that right in there. And I'll even lower the sensitivity of my mouse so I can get it just right. Something like that. It's pretty darn close. And that's about as good as you're going to get. So then you close that. And then we reevaluate and we say, okay, fit my window. And then, all right, so what is my theta 4 here? My theta 4 is 148.414 degrees. Okay, that's the maximum that we're going to get for theta 4. And then the mi um, theta 3 value, it'd be the angle between the x axis and theta 3, which is 109.467. And that's all there really is to it. Um, I know I made this look easy, but it does take, uh, it took a lot of practice, and I think it did take a lot of going through the tutorials, and I must have built this mach this mechanism at least 15 times. So um, you didn't have see get the pleasure of seeing all the error messages that I had to work through, and uh, in future uh, episodes, I'm going to try to work through it and then as I come up with some, uh, problems I'm going to show you how I solve those problems. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit about just the basics of Creo and the sketching tools. Uh, another quick thing that's going to be really helpful for you is if you hover over these it will tell you what they are. Um, same up here but you can make it go a little faster by just pressing the alt key and it will just then tell you what each of those functions does. Um, so if you have questions, uh, I encourage you to uh, please leave them in the comments below or email me at this following address. And I hope that uh, you continue to watch these series and uh, we can all learn about uh, using this drafting software together. Thanks for watching.